Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I would like to continue talking about uh, nuclear power. In particular, we'll talk about a uh, reaction which is called fusion. Um, now, this uh, lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unizor.com. I do suggest you to uh, watch this lecture from, from the website by going through the menu because it's part of the course and the course has certain logical sequence, it has interdependency, etc. Uh, plus, there is a prerequisite course called Math for Teens on the same website. Uh, all courses are free, no ads, no strings attached. All right, so let's go for the fusion. Well, first of all, what is a nuclear reaction, which we call fusion? Well, the, the, the first reaction which we were talking about was fission. That's when we are splitting a heavy nuclei, nu nucleus into parts. And during this reaction, um, the energy was released. And we were using a very simple analogy. Uh, if you have a spring, but you squeeze it and put some kind of a thread on both ends, so it doesn't really um, uh, go back to a neutral state. Now, this spring has a potential energy, and the thread which keeps it in a squeezed position uh, is restricting, basically, to release this energy. Now, what is the analogy with nuclei? This thread is uh, an analogy of a strong force which keeps protons and neutrons together in, uh, in, a, in, a, nuclear, in a nucleus. And the spring, the potential energy, is a potential energy of uh, protons which are very near each other and they are repulsing each other because they're all uh, positively uh, charged. So there is an electric charge and uh, they, they are repulsing uh, each other but they cannot really move outside. Uh, of the uh, boundaries of uh, nucleus because the strong forces keep them together. But if we, if we somehow cut the strong forces uh, by, let's say, bombarding the uh, nucleus of uranium-235 with the neutron, then that heat is sufficient to disbalance the system and the nucleus is split. And because of the energy, uh, the potential energy um, between the protons electrostatically repulsing each other, repelling each other, is greater than the strength, than the energy needed to break the strong force, the total result of this nuclear reaction is uh, releasing excess energy. Now, I will use exactly the same kind of a logic, but situation is slightly different on the lighter um, uh, uh, side of the uh, periodic table of Mendeleev, let's say when we're talking about um, hydrogen. Now, in, in case of hydrogen, the, the nucleus is very light, and there is not enough potential energy in the nucleus to basically in the light elements. Actually, light means like from from the beginning of the periodic table from hydrogen up to like ferrum for to, to iron. So all these nucleuses are not big enough. So the electrostatic repulsion between the protons is not sufficient to basically overcome the strong forces. Uh, if we will start you know, bombarding with whatever we can, like a couple of neutrons hit the, the nucleus. So, in case of a bigger nucleus like uranium, the number of protons is very large, and so they are repulsing in a, in a much stronger way. So, there is more energy if we will separate them. So, the same kind of a fission reaction, the splitting, would not work for light elements. But, Precisely because of that, the opposite reaction would release the, um, the energy. So the opposite reaction, when we are not splitting the nuclear, 
but the other way around. We are taking two lighter nucleus, nuclei and combine them together into a little bit heavier one. That reaction will release energy because in this particular case uh, the difference between strong forces and, uh, and electrostatic forces are working in the opposite direction. So let me just explain it uh, on, uh, on a particular, exp uh, on a particular um, e example like analogy which I'm using analogy with the spring and the thread here and I will use some other analogy for the opposite reaction for the fusion. Um, so again what happens if we are um, bringing close together the uh, two light nuclei um, well we have to go against electrostatic repulsion right because we have protons here and protons there so they repel each other so we have to do it however if we will move them sufficiently close then the strong forces which are working on a short distance but they are very strong will actually overcome the repulsion uh, of the electrostatic forces and they will bring together a heavier nuclear, nucle nucleus and the difference between the energy um, which is spent to bring them together and energy released by um, by the fact that potential energy um, of the strong forces will be actually spent, will be released when they are combined together into one nucleus. So the strong forces, this potential energy in the strong force is greater and the release of energy whenever they are falling on each other is greater than consumption of, uh, consumption of energy to bring them together. Now, and here is uh, uh, the example which I kind of came up with to explain this situation in a, well, more or less similar way. In this case, we will use two magnets Now this is north, this is south, this is south, this is north, and there is a spring in between, in the neutral position. Now what kind of forces are actually uh, working here? Now I am actually using these two magnets as two protons. Now why magnets? Well, magnets are symbolizing the strong force, which is working to basically combine them together whenever they're close enough. But there is a repulsion. So repulsion is this spring. This is a repulsion. It prevents these two magnets from bringing them together. So what happens actually? Well, if we do nothing, hap not nothing happens, obviously. But if we will start bringing them together against the spring. Here is what happens in a real mechanical world, actually. Uh, spring is, uh, um, is obeying the Hooke's law, which means the distance um, uh, which we are squeezing it uh, by is proportional to the force, actually, which it exhorts. So, linearly. So, force is proportional to linear extension or um, or shortening. Now the magnetic force is actually um, obeying the invert in, in, in inverse square uh, from the from the distance. So whenever we are squeezing this thing the force between these two the attraction is increasing inversely proportional to a square of a distance between them but the resistance of a spring whenever we are trying to square uh, to to to, um, to squeeze it is proportional to a uh, uh, inversely proportional to a um, distance by which we are squeezing it right i mean considering the length so but my point is that the resistance of the spring grows uh slower than 
uh, attraction of the uh, of the magnets and at some point whenever they're really close enough magnetic force will overcome the spring resistance and they will just fall on each other and at that moment certain amount of energy will be released um, and in this case basically this is exactly the model how two protons are combined together into um, into one particular um, uh, nucleus so at certain distance you can't do anything with them but if you are trying to if you apply certain amount of energy to bring them together against the um, repelling forces of electrostatically positively charged protons at certain distance a very small distance then the strong force will come uh, will overcome the resistance of the electrostatic force and certain amount of energy will be released um, released because again the strong force um, in this particular case has more potential energy in, in, in this distance when it's released it will be more energy than the energy consumed by um, bringing together against electrostatic repulsion so this is a good model now based on this model I'll just give you an example of a concrete um, fusion which might happen here it is now um, I was telling um, in the previous lecture I was telling about certain concept called isotopes so certain elements um, which have certain amount of um, electro uh, static charge, certain number of protons and certain number of electrons, well, the same, presumably, if it's neutral. However, they might have different number of neutrons in the nuclear, nucleus. And depending on different number of uh, neutrons in the nucleus, with the same number of protons, we have different isotopes of the same element. And they are slightly different in their qualities. So, in this case, we are talking about two different isotopes of hydrogen. So, the hydrogen always has positive uh, one uh, electric charge, which means there is only one proton. But the number of electrons, uh, number of electrons is exactly the same, one. But the number of neutrons can be different. So, there is one particular, the most common type of hydrogen, that's one one which means there is no neutrons okay so there is one proton and that's the only thing so atomic mass is one now there is uh, a hydrogen which also has one proton but it has one neutron so atomic mass is two it's called um, deuterium and finally there is another H hydrogen which has only one proton but it has two neutrons so atomic weight is three now what happens um, if we will bring together these two um, isotopes of uh, uh, of hydrogen and here is the reaction which is is real um, so we have H we have one H two which is uh, deuterium plus 1H3, which is tritium. So two isotopes of hydrogen, one with one neutron and one proton, another is with two neutrons and one proton. Now, they, uh, they're converted into um, uh, helium, which has the atomic mass of two, two protons and two neutrons. Now, this is one neutron, this is two neutrons, this is two neutrons, so one, one extra, so one extra goes out. So atomic mass weight one and uh, electrical charge is zero. That's neutron. It's balanced. One plus one equals two protons. Now the atomic mass is two and three, four and one, five, which means you have one and two neutrons this is two neutrons and one neutron so it's the same balances so this is the reaction which really can happen 
Well, most importantly is, number one, we release the energy, and we're talking about why re uh, energy is released um, in, in this reaction of fusion. And we have this one, which helps to continue um, uh, the reaction in, in some other things. So it's like a chain reaction, basically. Remember, the same was happening with the fission. Now, this is not such a simple thing. Because to bring together from a relatively large distance two uh, nuclei of um, hydrogen in this particular case is not easy because they are electrostatically uh, repelling each other. Which means that we need a high temperature and high pressure to apply to these two nuclei to combine them together into helium. Well, it's not easy. Now, one of the um, very uh, important examples of reactions similar to this one is our sun. Whatever happens in the sun, well, it's a complicated reaction, but something similar to this is actually happening. Something, sim something which is actually a fusion of certain um, nuclei into a higher nuclei and then it actually produces produces a lot of energy which we are consuming on earth and that's basically the source of life on earth source of energy at least okay now in uh, earth conditions in earth's uh, um, environment um, the only thing which we which we definitely know um, where it happens is uh, a hydrogen bomb. Well, obviously, if you remember when we were talking about atomic bomb, when uranium was split, uranium-235 or plutonium, um, it's enough actually to give it a little punch and then it starts the chain reaction. In this case, it's not a little punch. To, um, to bring these two nuclei together, we need a very high pressure and high temperature. And uh, one of the ways it's um, arranged in the uh, hydrogen bomb is to use atomic bomb based on uranium or plutonium to, to, to develop this condition of high pressure and high temperature so the uh, fusion reaction can start. So fission of the uranium or plutonium is causing the fusion of the hydrogen hydrogen isotopes, for instance. Now, obviously we want to control this huge source of energy. Now, we all know that hydrogen bomb is significantly more powerful than, than uranium-based. Now, it's very um, tempting to basically do something to make it, to, to keep it under control. Now, the fission is actually under control if we want it in, in nuclear power stations. We are just slowing down neutrons, slowing down their, reducing their number, etc., free, nu free neutrons, so we are slowing down the chain reaction. In this case, it's much more difficult. Now, there are some experimental um, um, uh, power station, I should say, I don't know, sources, whatever people were developing, but there is nothing actually in, in the real production mode right now. It's only an only experimental stage. They're using certain um, devices, certain uh, installations to achieve the conditions needed for uh, fusion, the high pressure and high temperature. But again, right now it's only on experimental basis. So basically, that's it. I wanted to talk about um, uh, fusion. Um, th there is not a lot of mathematics here in, in this particular lecture, but believe me, there is a lot. When people were developing the, um, the bombs and, uh, and whatever they're doing right now, experimenting with controlling the nuclear power, the hydrogen uh, fusion, for instance, um, believe me, there is a lot of um, much more complicated physics than whatever I was just talking about. There is a lot of mass, there are a lot of experiments, it's, it's not easy. Whatever I'm just talking about is an extremely simplified version 
in, in the real world, things are much more complex than this. There are different uh, transformations of different elements from one to another. So the whole thing is for real professionals. The purpose of this lecture is just to explain the main concept of what fusion actually is on a very simple example. Well, that's it. I suggest you to read the textual material which is supplementing this particular lecture on unisor.com. Um, you have to go to Physics for Teens um, course. Uh, it's the part which is called Energy, and the uh, uh, particular chapter is Energy of the uh, Nucleus, which has in lectures about fission, about fusion, etc. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.